important. Uh, we started to talk about um, how we can quantify heat. Uh, we saw that definitely it's going to be temperature. All right, temperature is going to go up. And uh, it's going to depend on a couple of things. One, what type of material it is. They have different thermal properties, different conductances. And so that's going to impact um, how much the temperature changes based on the amount of energy that goes in or comes out. Okay. Uh, the other thing that's going to matter is, of course, the amount of material. The more stuff there is, the more energy it takes to heat it up a certain uh, temperature. All right. And then so when we start this, we're going to uh, measure temperature. All right. Well, we want to figure out how much heat or uh, heat it was transferred, absorbed, or lost. And so what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the change in temperature. All right. So we're going to often calculate the change in temperature. And just like delta E, delta T is going to be final minus initial. So you measure the temperature of the substance initially, T sub I. Then you measure the temperature of the substances after it gained or lost heat. That's T sub F. And so that's how we can calculate the change in temperature. <clears throat> so we're also going to have to incorporate the amount of material, the mass. We can just use mass. And then also something uh, relative to its thermal properties. And what dictates how much temperature change uh, occurs given an amount of heat is called the heat capacity. So the heat capacity is what we need to incorporate. All right, and we will primarily use the specific heat capacity. All right. The specific heat capacity is the amount of energy required to increase one gram of a substance one degree Celsius. Or one Kelvin. We can also use Kelvin here. And sometimes we might want to. Because for every one degree Celsius goes up, the temperature of one goes up one Kelvin as well. They're not the same, of course. Zero degrees Celsius is 273 Kelvin, but going from zero to one degree Celsius is also going from 273 to 274. And okay, and so on this table, table 6.4 from your textbook, you see some specific heat capacities. Um, and generally, the better a conductor something is, like these metals, the lower the heat capacity. The energy is transferred to it very efficiently, and so it takes less energy to increase the temperature of copper or silver or gold or lead, okay? If something is an insulator, like water or ethanol, that heat isn't transferred as efficiently, so it takes more heat to increase the temperature, one degree Celsius, okay, per gram, okay. So now we can combine all these things to figure out how much heat was transferred uh, by taking into account the change of temperature, the mass, and now our specific heat capacity, okay, which is uh, generally uh, abbreviated as C sub S. But as you know, I'm pretty lazy. Most of the time, I'll just write C, so for specific heat capacity, OK? So our new handy-dandy equation for heat is Q equals M C delta T. Of course, Q is what? Heat. M stands for mass, specific heat capacity. That's what we're just learning. That's uh, C. And 
And then delta T is your change in temp. All right, so I've also thought of a better a way to make my YouTube videos better, okay? The problem with recording them live, okay, the problem with recording them for the 1045 live, uh, videos, for those of you who had to put up with me, is that was just me in my office doing them, okay? So I, just me alone, all by myself. Don't worry, I'm okay. Um, but just me. So that's just, it was kind of boring. Now I'm in the a lecture, so it's a little bit more lively. I get to interact with you. So I think it's, I think it'll turn out better. But the, even the, the mic, no matter where it's at, the mic on the tablet or the, um, hopefully, the wireless earphone that I'm wearing and looking cool picks up, it doesn't pick up you as often. Okay. So it can't hear when you laugh at all my funny jokes. Okay. So I think I'm going to have to put in like a laugh track. Like, like, for like bad sitcoms, like a laugh track. All right. Oh, it's going to be great. And then for even the jokes that flop, like most of them, I'll, st I'll still hear people laughing at me in my office when I'm alone. Don't worry. I'm okay. All right. So let's try this out. That's a new handy dandy equation. So let's try it out on example 6.2. All right. Suppose you find a penny. Okay. Minted before 1982, when pennies were almost entirely made out of copper. Okay, remember that? We learned that in Gen Chem 1 laboratory. This is an exciting graph, measuring the mass of pennies, plotting them. Oh, exciting. Okay, so how much heat is absorbed by is a penny? So, well, wait. So we supposed to find a penny in the snow. Okay, so this, this problem needs to be a lot more specific. Okay, because we're not going to find a penny in the snow. Okay. All right, so where are we at? Let's pretend where are we at? Where are we at? We have to find this penny in the snow. Colorado, Colorado? okay, so we're in Colorado. Anywhere specific? Denver? Denver? How about Telluride? Okay. Telluride, Colorado? Ever been there? Telluride? Okay, it's known for like skiing, good skiing. The reason that why that's a better answer, Denver's a good answer, but my answer is better. Uh, because Telluride, Colorado is named after a tellurium mine that's nearby, TE element 52. So that's fitting for a chemistry class that we're in Telluride, Colorado. All right. Little known fact, you can tweet. You can tweet that. Telluride, Colorado is named after you. Go. You're okay? Okay. All right. So we're in Telluride, Colorado. We find a penny in the snow, and it's negative 8 degrees Celsius. Okay, it warms up to the temperature of your body, which is 37.0 degrees Celsius. All right, uh, how much heat is absorbed by the penny? All right, so assume the penny is pure copper. We're going to need that because we're going to need the specific heat of copper. All right, so our new handy dandy equation is Q equals MC delta T. All right, so what's our mass? 3.10, all right. All right, we'd have to look up the specific heat of copper. It's right here, 0. 0.385, and the units for specific heat capacity are gonna be joules per gram degrees Celsius. So that's 0. 0.385 joules per gram degrees Celsius times delta T. We need to calculate that, right? All right, so delta T, just like delta E is final minus initial, so temperature of the final, minus initial. What's my final temperature? 37.0, so it warmed up to the temperature of your body, so 37.0 degrees Celsius. Negative 8 minus a negative 8.0 degrees Celsius. What do we get? 45? 
45 degrees Celsius. All right, so that is our equation, and then we'll punch it into our calculator. So, oh, yeah, break them out if you got them. We're going to do this a lot. Surprised it took this long to get to a, a problem. I've been yapping too much. Need to get to the, I know why you're here. It's for the calculations. We should start doing those earlier. I would love the answer. What is it? 53.707 joules. Okay, grams cancel out. Degrees Celsius cancel out. Yep, so that's joules. But what else do we think about when we're uh, reporting our final answer? Six figs. Good old six figs back from Gen Chem 1 to save the day. How many six figs should we have? Three, so what should we go with? 53.7, good. And still joules. <coughs> All right, so that's Q. That's Q of the penny. Okay. And of course, what sign is that 53.7? Plus, right? Plus. So, what would be the Q of U? You picked up the penny. Q of the penny is plus 53.7. What's that mean? What happened to the penny? The penny lost? The penny gained 53.7 joules of energy. Where did that energy come from? U. So, what's the Q of U? Negative 53.7 joules. All right, so you lost 53.7 joules of energy picking up that penny. So the next time you pick up a penny in the snow, well, it's not, there's, there's lots of this involved, okay? But just picking up that penny, in the snow, you got to think about if it's worth it. Like money-wise, if it's worth it, you lost 53.7 joules of energy. So you have to eat 53.7 joules of food to replenish that energy. So you got to calculate how much food you have to eat to get back 53.7 joules. So, so what's that? They're just squeezing. They're just skiing. So yeah, they're hot. Okay. But that is that's an advantage. Uh, another, yet yeah, another advantage of living in South Florida. Our pennies don't get that cold. Okay, so you're not losing as much heat. Heck, on a hot day in the sun, you might be gaining some heat. All right, you may be gaining some energy and a penny. All right, think about that. So another another win for South Florida. Okay, you can't ski here though. I don't know. I don't like skiing though. So. I don't think. No. All right. Okay, so that's how we quantify heat.